Now we can talk a little more about the products. Yeah. Uh, what were some of your key takeaways or favorite items of uh, product specific? Uh, let's start with iPhones. Yeah. And obviously from form factor point of view, uh, we have a new design, which they call it as a plateau, mm -hmm. right? Where we have a bump across on the upper part of the iPhones. And, mm -hmm. and that is a standout design. If you look at those who buy iPhones, which are aspirational mm -hmm. phones for many, right? When they show of the iPhones, they normally don't have much differentiation because there are uh, three uh, camera module, uh, camera sensors and or two camera sensors. And you cannot make out what is different between 16 Pro Max and a 15 Pro Max or a 13 Pro Max, right? Absolutely. But now with this plateau, I think it sets a new design language for Apple. And what they have done beyond design is more of engineering of the entire circuitry. Mm -hmm. which goes around the plateau, yeah. uh, right from silicon yeah. to modem, as well as antennas, right, yeah. are around the plateau. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, they have done a phenomenal job. What that it has done is allowed them to have a bigger battery and uh, even uh, for Pro models, uh, they have this cooling yeah. uh, chamber, right? They have redesigned the entire chamber, which spreads out, dissipates heat across. Also, the big thing they did in terms of design was eSIM only. Yeah. All the models are eSIM only, mm -hmm. except for uh, in China, mm -hmm. uh, where the Pro, 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 Pro Max and the base models are not eSIM. Mm -hmm. uh, but the iPhone Air is eSIM only in China as well, yeah. right? And Apple is working across uh, with different carriers and more than 500 carriers, mm -hmm. right, uh, in supporting eSIM across. So I think that that is a big trend uh, from eSIM perspective. Mm -hmm. And we have done a lot of research on eSIM across the value chain of eSIM ecosystem. Everyone have been expecting eSIM only iPhone, yeah. which not only gives them more from user experience point of view, mm -hmm. and as, as also carriers from activation point of view, so many costs save, right? Mm -hmm. Because you can activate at home. Yeah. You don't have to go to the store, right? get that plastic mm -hmm. SIM, mm -hmm. right? And sustainability point of view as well, yeah. right? From logistics and even the plastic yeah. SIM point of view. I think this is an inflection point for eSIM in smartphones, where almost the entire portfolio is eSIM only, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I think that was uh, a big thing from design point of view because now they could uh, increase the battery size to more than 10%, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And giving two hours of extra video play playback according to Apple. Mm -hmm. So I believe uh, overall, it's a completely new design with the plateau, with the circuitry, with the battery, with the cooling chamber. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say uh, from overall uh, look and feel also it's pretty good and that was more on overall design yeah um, I'll talk more about iPhone Air yeah on, on the air side holding it uh, we didn't get to use it that long but holding it I was uh, struck by how easy it was one-handed use with that extra thinness and also even though around the camera all the vital components are in that top it still was not top heavy so I think um, people consumers will be delighted when they come in the store they see the aesthetics of it and the one-handed use uh i think um yeah i think that 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 form factor will do very well the other item about it is that front-facing camera that you can switch so very easy one-handed use for all your mm. your your front-facing uh camera uh work and then finally uh yeah pushing eSIM. this is Gonna, it's going to uh, really push eSIM likely because I do think even the China market will want this device. Right. So it will it will really uh, force this. And it was uh, the only uh, iPhone which was announced that has their own modem in it. All right. uh, much improved modem. C1X. Um, C1X. Uh, it's yeah. a second generation modem which mm -hmm. compared to iPhone 16e yep. which has a C1, right? Right. And uh, yeah, per Apple, 30% improvements in that. So it looks like a significant advancement uh, uh, on the modem side for them. Right. And they have certified most of the carriers mm -hmm. for C1 and C1X. Yeah. Uh, so it can be a global release, yeah. right? And optimized for most of the networks mm -hmm. uh, on which it will run. Yeah. Neil, Apple talked about uh, uh, Bluetooth um, uh, Wi-Fi threads uh, chip. This is kind of the starting point, but what does that mean for Apple? I think Apple 
has been on this journey where they want to be more vertically integrated in every department because they can scale it across the products, right? Mm -hmm. We saw it with Apple Silicon, we saw it with uh, uh, Modem now, mm -hmm. right? With C1, C1X, yeah. going to multiple portfolio and now maybe even into variables in future. Mm -hmm. But now, uh, when you look at the N1 chip we have launched, right? With, which is Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and Thread com yeah. combined. Actually, Apple has been using that in variables. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure about iPad, but they have been using it in variables, yeah. right? Now they're scaling up to iPhone, which is a significant uh, feat considering yeah. uh, now they have their own modem, they have their own networking chip, yeah. they have their own uh, silicon mm -hmm. like CPU, and also uh, other peripheral yeah. uh, components which yeah. they are they have been investing in. So I I believe uh, what it does it brings in the latest and greatest technologies into one package. Yeah. Uh, Thread, Wi-Fi 7, mm -hmm. right, Bluetooth, LE, the yeah. latest version. Sure. And uh, it also means signals that iPhone could be a more of a central hub for a lot of thread-based devices to mm -hmm. control mm -hmm. in future. And maybe you could see more thread-based support devices coming to uh, Apple's portfolio in future. Yeah, absolutely. The home uh, has been the Wild West getting stuff to integrate. And this could uh, be the start of really starting to integrate it uh, you know, from your phone or your watch or whatever Apple product, uh, I think that home integration, uh, Apple's really going to be working hard on on that in the, over the next three years. I would, the they have not integrated the UWB and NFC yeah. into this chip, yeah. right? Earlier, we used to see the combo chip from yeah. Broadcom, yeah. right? So we'll have to see what happens to Broadcom. Yeah. Has Broadcom or others lost the yeah. socket yeah. Uh, in iPhone? Yeah. So we'll have to wait and see yeah. once we tear down the device. Yeah. We'll come to know whether it's completely iPhone chip and there's no Broadcom in there. Yeah. But I think that is something would be interesting. Uh, any other Broadcom has been di diversifying yeah. beyond yeah. Apple uh, with the Wi-Fi business, which is now very tiny. They have been diving into custom compute, AI, and so yeah. forth, yeah. Uh, as well as the software business with acquired. Yeah, right? Absolutely. So, and anyways, they have their market cap is trillion dollars, yeah. Broadcom, yeah. and they've done pretty well. Independent of, so maybe they knew this coming, mm -hmm. uh, this was coming from Apple, yeah. right? Yeah. And there were obviously rumors many times before yeah. on Apple building their own Wi-Fi chip. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Uh, another thing was uh, the Apple Silicon, yeah. right? So from Silicon perspective, we saw A19 in the base models. Mm -hmm. But now the base model is just iPhone mm -hmm. uh, 17, sure. right? Yeah. But the iPhone Air gets the 19 Pro, Pro. right? Mm -hmm. And... The iPhone 17 Pro, Pro Max, mm -hmm. has obviously the mm -hmm. Pro version of the chipsets, yeah. right? But uh, the Pro and Pro Max, there is a difference where the, they have accelerators within yeah. the GPU, mm -hmm. right? So that is something new where now they have neural engine accelerators across mm -hmm. CPU, GPU, and, and in the neural engine itself, mm -hmm. right? So that brings in a lot of uh, excitement for developers and gamers yeah. uh, to bring in AI in, ga AI in gaming or... Uh, AI across uh, different models running on device, right? And more of uh, getting that heterogeneous computing yeah. uh, nom nomenclature, right? And work around for that. So mm -hmm. I think from Silicon strategy, I think Apple is on leading edge compared mm -hmm. to the competitors, right? Mm -hmm. And since they control the software stack as well, mm -hmm. it makes it um, very robust and a powerful chipset. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think this sets the stage of uh, next iterations. Um, yeah, Apple seems to be very confident about their performance and that. Um, the other takeaway from the Pro Pro Max, yeah, the other point uh, Apple made multiple times, uh, the, the performance of the camera for the Pro Pro Max, yeah. really trying to differenti differentiate that skew from like the base model uh, for um, YouTubers or making your own content. Uh, they had lots of uh, demos on, yeah, the, the performance improvements. And uh, yeah, that, I guess that was my key takeaway from the, the Pro Pro Max. Uh, talking about cameras, the biggest thing what they did was in the front camera. Mm -hmm. Now they were 18 megapixel camera mm -hmm. and the sensor is not 4x3, it's 4x4. Four four. Four. Mm -hmm. Now uh, anyone, at, at least the Gen Z is, right? They take selfies amount. Uh, yeah. They take use the front camera more than the rear camera. So from that perspective and the vloggers and others, they can use, the AI takes care of whether it's a uh, basically a portrait or it's a landscape, right? 
it, you don't have to rotate your phone. Yeah. Since it's 4x4 four four sensor, it yeah. can with AI, it can take care of uh, most of the uh, selfies. Uh, in, and it has uh, the technology called center stage or what is what they call center stage front camera, yeah. right? Which comes from the MacBook. Yeah. Uh, they also have a center stage in iPad, I think, mm -hmm. right? So I think that is another big uh, feature which is being added mm -hmm. from front facing camera perspective. Yeah, the the demo that they showed uh, to give the audience perspective of, uh, you know, you're video recording a basketball game, but you the front facing camera is facing you. So you're sharing that with yeah with your family and that so they can see uh, both yourself and yeah the action. action and the front facing camera is following you even though you might be moving the the, the phone. So yeah, those were uh, yeah significant advances.